All right. Last thing for us to talk about in this unit are our quadratic applications. Now, this part you don't have to write down in your notes, but if you do want to, please feel free to. Um, so quadratic applications, that's our fancy talk for word problems. So really what we're dealing with here are we're dealing with word problems. And there are two kinds of word problems that they are going to ask you. Uh, the first kind is what we call projectile motion. So projectile motion, that's enough. What that means is uh, that's some kind of object that is launched in the air. So it could be a rocket. Um, some firework, it could be um, like a golf ball, football, any kind of sports ball uh, that is launched in the air. Um, so what happens is that object gets launched up, it comes back down, it always has an upside down parabola shape to it, so that means we have a negative leading coefficient for that. So with our projectile motion questions, generally what they are looking for is they are looking for that vertex or that maximum. So what we have to keep in mind is they will either ask for when it reaches that maximum. So that means you're looking for your X value. So to get that, that's going to be your negative B over 2A. <clears throat> or it is looking for what the actual height is. Which is the Y value of your vertex. So the projectile motions, again, it's usually what is that maximum height? When does it reach the maximum height? So that would be your X portion. That's your win, time, any kind of thing like that. Um, and then what is the actual maximum height? That is going to be the Y portion of it. Sometimes it will ask, when does it reach the ground? So then that's going to be your root. So that's when it equals a zero. So those are the kinds of questions that we deal with with our projectile motions. Um, then there are other kinds of word problems that deal with our quadratics and generally they are looking for the root. So if they're, remember root is the same as the zeros, which is the same as the solution. So if it's asking you for the solutions, it means it's asking you for the roots or the zeros, um, which means you would just set the equation equal to zero and you would try to factor and solve. Factoring is not an option. Yeah, completing the square quadratic formula, um, square root method. You have lots of different options based on the kinds of equation that you have. So those are our, our uh, quadratic applications. You're looking for one of two things. You're either looking for your vertex or you are looking for your root. So again, if you're looking for your vertex, we're going to start with that x equals negative b over 2a. And then to find the height of it, you just plug that x value into your equation, and that's going to tell you what the height of your object is. Um, sometimes they will ask you to sketch a graph, and that's when you use your calculator to help you with that portion of it. So let's take a look at the couple examples that I gave you. So here, first one, we have an object is fired upwards with an initial velocity of 112 feet per second. Its height and feet above the ground as a function of time in seconds since it was fired is given by this equation here. So this is nice. We don't have to create the equation. They already gave the equation to us. So a little less work on our part. So always be thankful when they give you that. So they want to know at what height was the object Fired. So at what height was the object fired? So that means we're looking at time of zero because the object was fired 
at the very beginning of our scenario here that we're looking at. Uh, so we're looking at when time is a zero. So if I plug zero into my equation for t, negative 16 times zero squared plus 112 times zero, where does it get zero? So it's zero feet is when it where it is fired at that zero feet, which means this object is on the ground. They're not up on some cliff. They're not shooting it from a building. This one is on the ground when it gets launched up into the air. Part B, sketch a general curve of this equation. So all of our equations in these word problems are always going to be quadrant one. So I'm only going to draw a quadrant one graph here. And then I'm going to use my calculator. So I'm going to go to my y equals, type in negative 16t squared plus 112t. Look at my graph. You're not going to be able to see this too terribly well. But we can't really see too much. What if I do that? There we go. I'll dim the screen a little bit. You can see it much better now. So we can't see a whole lot. I can't really get a good picture of my equation here. So what I'm going to push is I'm going to push my zoom button. And then I want, if we go down, zoom fit. This is going to try to help me fix my window. So if we pick zoom fit. What are we thinking? I'm thinking that's not too terribly great of a picture. I don't need these negatives, okay? Because we're not looking at when it's below the ground, which is what this is suggesting. So better option is look at your window. My X min, I want to be at zero, and my max, I want it to be at 10, okay? So zero and 10. If zero and 10 doesn't work, I'll change it. But for right now, zero to 10, and I want my min to be at zero because, again, I'm only looking at quadrant number one. I am not looking at anything else. So my y min, I want to be zero. All right. And then I don't like to have decimals, so I'm just going to change my y max to 200. Again, if 200 is not good, then I will change it. Okay. So then y scale, that's what this stands for right here where my little blinky guy is. Y S C L. That stands for Y scale. This means it's going up by one. So since my Y is from zero to 200, this would put 200 different little tick marks on my Y axis, which I don't want. So I'm gonna change that to be 20. So that means each little mark on my Y axis is gonna represent 20. Now let's look at our graph. That is a much better looking picture for us. So. On my paper, I'm going to put 200 because that's what I put in my calculator for my Y max. Down here, I'm going to put 10, although my graph doesn't actually go to 10. It goes to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So 7 is when it hits the ground again. So then I'm going to just, whoop, there's my sketch of my curve. Okay, pretty, pretty good, pretty decent sketch there. See, find the maximum height, or no, find the time that the rocket reaches its greatest height and the maximum height. Label these on the, the gram, Ooh. the graph that you drew in part B. So what I'm going to teach you is in the calculator, We'll write a little note here, find max. So to find your maximum in your calculator, push the second button and then put trace. Second, trace. And right down here, as you can see, maximum is choice number four. Okay, so again, in the calculator, we can find that maximum. Second, trace, choice four. So I'm gonna select that then. And then we have this little blinky guy here. And right down here, it's asking us left bound. So what it wants us to do is it wants us to go to the left side of our maximum. 
So I'm going to arrow over to the left. And now my blinky guy is on the left side of it. So I'm going to hit enter. Now it says right bound. So now they want me to go to the right side. So basically what I'm doing is I am helping them narrow down where that maximum value is going to be. So I'm telling them it's somewhere between here and here. So they want us to give them a left side. They want us to give them a right side. And it's just narrowing it down for the calculator. That is especially important when you have more than one maximum value you might be trying to find. One of them might be a relative max somewhere. You need to help the calculator narrow down which part it's looking at. And then it asks you for a guess. You're welcome to try to guess, but you don't have to. So here our maximum is at x equals 3.5. And then the maximum value is 196. So 3.5 seconds, 196 feet. Oops. So 3.5 seconds, 196 feet. They told me to draw that here. So this is at three and a half. And this is 196 feet. So I've labeled it on my graph. Now let's say you didn't have your calculator or you don't remember how to do your second trace to find your maximum. Algebraically, we could find it by doing our x equals negative b over 2a. Looking at my equation, my b is 112. My a is negative 16. So that gives me a negative 32 in my denominator, 112 divided by 32 gives us our three and a half. So that's algebraically how you can find your three and a half, which is what it told us to do. It did tell us to algebraically find it. This was just confirming on the calculator how we found it. So then I'm going to take my three and a half and I'm going to plug it in for my T. And then I'll type in my calculator, negative 16 times 3 and a half squared plus 112 times 3 and a half, and I get 196. So this is algebraically how we find it, which is what they wanted. Algebraically. That is our algebraically. The other stuff, if it doesn't say that phrase algebraically, you can use that calculator. And I like to show you how to use that calculator to find it, even though the directions did say algebraically, because it's good to always check your work. All right. Now, part D, we are going to algebraically determine the time at which the rocket reaches the ground. All right, so reaching the ground means I am going to set my equation equal to zero. Now this one's factorable. I have a GCF here of negative 16p. So that's going to give me a t minus 7. Again, with these kinds of GCFs, I took 112 and I divided it by the 16 to see if it would work, and it did. So that's why I knew my GCF here was 16. So that negative 16t, when I set it equal to zero, I would divide by that 16, so I would get t equals zero. Again, this side, we set it equal to zero, add my seven, so I get t equals seven. It doesn't reach the ground at zero, so that's not actually going to be our answer. It reaches the ground at seven seconds. So again, you can find that in your calculator. If we push second and then trace, second, trace, finding the zero right there. That is choice number two. So again, it's going to ask you the same questions. Left bound. Now, I want this zero over here on the left. I'm sorry, on the right. I was thinking left because of left bound. I want this zero over here on the right. So when you're finding your roots, your left bound for this one is actually going to be kind of above it. 
it looks like it's above it. And then I have to go underneath it. Now, I don't actually know where my blinky guy is now because my window won't let me see it. But once I hit enter, I can see I have my two lines here, one on the left side, one on the right side. So I'm right, right around where it's going to be. And then I hit enter again. And there's my zero, x equals seven, y equals zero, which is what I calculated. So it matches it. And I already had my seven on here from when I made my picture. So you can use the calculator to help you find those values as well if you're unsure of your work there. All right. Let's take a look at our second one. This one's a little different. So a skateboard half pipe ramp has the shape in the form of a parabola whose equation is, there's one too many zeros in there. That should be 0 0.06 x squared minus 1.2x plus 7. All right, so there's one too many zeros in there. If you could just fix that, please. X represents the horizontal distance across the half pipe, which they told us is 20 feet. Okay, that's helpful. Y is the ramp's height above the ground in feet. With the help of a calculator, sketch a graph of the half pipe labeled below and then label its heights. Okay. So here we go. Again, it's going to be in quadrant one. All of these are going to be in quadrant one with these kinds of situations. So I put 20 on here because they told me right here, X is my horizontal distance. This is my horizontal and it's 20 feet wide. So I know at most it's going to be 20. So I'm going to type into my calculator my 0 0.06x squared minus 1.2x plus 7. And then I'm going to go to my window. My axis has to go from 0 to 20. And I'll change my x scale to go by 2s just because I can. For my Ys, I don't think it's going to get up to 200. I have never seen a skateboard half pipe that was 200 feet high. If you have, by all means, I would love to see that picture. I personally have not seen one. So I think 200 is a little high. I'll go with 100. I still think 100 is too high. But we'll see what happens. And then I'll change my Y scale to go up by 10s instead of 20s this time. Let's take a look at my graph. Oh, yeah. I was way off because my graph is all the way down here. I can't really see too much. So I am changing my Y window again. I will pick 50. I'll go up by fives. Nope. Still off. So let's go up by 25. Still a little high, but that picture is a lot better. I'm going to change it one more time. I'm going to make it 15. Oh, there we go. Much better. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and sketch that picture now. This is 15. This looks like it's about halfway up. There we go. There's my sketch. Nice thing about sketch, you don't have to be completely 100% accurate. It's just a sketch. Okay. So, label its height at its endpoint and its minimum point. Okay, so I'm going to go for the minimum first. So, minimum. Again, second, trace, and then it's choice number three. So second, trace, choice number three, left bound. So I'm going to move over to the left a little bit, move over to the right, and then hit my enter, 10, 1. 
So right here, 10 and then one. One. So at 10 feet, it's one foot off the ground. That is what our minimum is saying. 10 feet along the horizontal, it is one foot off the ground. All right, and then we need to find our end points. So we got to find where it is here and here. So for that, right here, this is our y-axis. So really what we're looking for on this part is we are looking for our y-intercept. So our y-intercept is when that x equals zero. So I'm just going to look at my table. Is that seven? This is seven feet. And then I'm going to look at my other endpoint, which is when x is at 20. So I'm just going to scroll down to 20. And again, that's at seven feet. So that's everything they asked us to do. We sketched our picture. We labeled its height at its endpoints and at, at its minimum points. So you just have to pay attention to what they're asking for. Sometimes it's just a graph, so it's manipulating your calculator, playing around with it a little bit. Sometimes you actually have to calculate either your vertex, so axis of symmetry, and then plugging it in, or you're solving for your root. So you set your equation equal to zero, and then you solve it.